Stuart, it's been quite a, a busy few days, week or so off the, the park and uh, we've now got a, a revised timescale in terms of the, the planning application. Yeah, I, th I think everyone was very disappointed the fact that we had uh, asked for it to be removed from the agenda on the October meeting, but uh, no, we're uh, convinced that was the right decision. Uh, we felt there was a high risk the decision might have gone against us. Uh, because it became very clear those areas uh, of the application that the council had interpreted in a different way from uh, how we believe we had presented it. And uh, we agreed between us that there should be further work done in these areas, which has been going on the last five, six weeks. I would like to think we've now got to the stage where there's a clear understanding of all the main issues and uh, I think we've every right to feel uh, quietly confident that uh, we'll get the right decision uh, when it comes up to the full council at the end of January. And the predetermination, a second predetermination, but it's only to discuss the, the new information that uh, the club has provided to the council? Yes, the, 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 the new information was uh, focused around three main areas. One was the uh, the importance of co-location co of the, the stadium, the training facilities and the community facilities together. I think we've demonstrated very clearly the benefits that are there for everyone by having that as a, as a, as a single unit. Uh, the, the second area was in respect of the sequential testing, which uh, they weren't satisfied that we had uh, adopted the right approach. We got legal opinion, uh, which confirmed we had adopted the right approach. Uh, they have accepted that. Uh, we, they also felt that there was uh, two of the sites uh, in, that were still possibilities in their eyes, sites that had been considered as part of the process. That was King's Links and also the Lauriston site. Uh, We've provided further evidence there that clearly demonstrates that none of these two sites are deliverable and that Kingsford is the only uh, affordable and deliverable site. And also a new report out this week suggesting that the economic case for Kingsford might actually be stronger than was first thought. Yes, uh, no, I, I think first time round uh, there was a clear demonstration that there was uh, a substantial financial benefit to the, the city and the region uh, as relocating to, to Kingsford. And the new report has uh, demonstrated that the, the financial case is even stronger in, in, in what it was uh, viewed before. And I think it should also be borne in mind that uh, you know, the financial case has been based on a, an average attendance of uh, roughly 13 and a half thousand. We do genuinely believe if we can continue to put a, a one and team on that park combined with the new facilities then the, the, the numbers could be substantially greater down the line. And I think the other element that's been very much acknowledged in the discussions that's been held by the city is that if, if we're being honest as a, a city, a region, we look back over the last 20 years there's been a real lack of investment in serious infrastructure in this region. But we've now got ourselves onto the page where we're starting to address that with the new exhibition centre, the investment that's going into the airport, a new harbour at Cove, eh, the city centre redevelopment. And they now see that what we're setting out to do here with the club is another key element of that strategic infrastructure that will serve this city and region well for the next 20, 30, 40 years. The time scale for the, the council predetermination and the full council, it has slipped, but it, it, it's not slipped that far, but it is very, very important that this time we stick to this time scale. Yeah, it, it, it has slipped in as much as it, though, eh, when we drew up the initial programme for process and application, they must have it for a, a March meeting. It was then agreed because of the elections coming in in May that uh, we needed to give 
uh, it was going to be too tight to get it to the, the March meeting, uh, the elections in May, and then it was agreed that that would go to the council in June. It was then deferred to October, and unfortunately another deferral, but that was it, it, sort of at the club's request because we felt uh, we, we needed to make sure that we were getting the right decision. So we've now got a revised timetable, and it's vitally important that we all work to that. On the subject of investment, good news this week uh, in the shape of Tom Crotty's uh, investment from the States. No, it's uh, absolutely fantastic, and you know, as we've said before, when we asked Dave Cormack to to, to, to join the board, you no, know, we, we knew that uh, Dave was keen to invest himself. But during our discussions, our early discussions with Dave, you no, know, we felt that there was opportunities over there in the States. There's lots of people over there, it would be their direct or indirect uh, connections with the city and, and some even with the, the, the football club. So that was part of the remit we agreed with Dave and and uh, to be fair to Dave, he's, he's delivered. It's, it's fantastic to see this uh, investment coming through at such an early stage. But Tom's a guy that's very heavily involved in grassroots soccer in America. He sees, he's, he's been over here a, couple of times now, he sees what we're setting out to do with the club and the community trust. He knows and understands the power and, and, and passion of football, uh, how that can be used as an effective tool to address some of the issues we've got for next generation, getting them active, getting more involved, seeing important importance of fitness. So Tom is very much behind what we're setting out to do here. But what he also recognises is that the vital importance of having top-class facilities to deliver, and, and that's really why he's targeted his, his investment into the club. And our former goalkeeper, Bobby Clark, who's a friend of Tom's, he played a, a, a part as well in convincing uh, Tom that Aberdeen was the place to put his money into. Yeah, and, and, and that's another demonstration of using the, the, the Aberdeen connections and uh, Bobby's son Tommy uh, works along with uh, uh, Tom Crotty and Grassroots Soccer and, and uh, he, he's been over here as well and, and we've had a lot of good feedback from them. Uh, there's a lot of good ideas I think that we can learn and uh, get the, uh, imported into the trust from work that they've been doing over there for for, for many years. You had your regular meeting with the manager last night and uh, during that he told you that he's fully committed to this club? Yeah, no, D D Derek made his position very clear to, uh, to me last night. He's no, no intentions of uh, going anywhere. Uh, he loves this club. He knows he's loved. He knows he's uh, respected by everyone at the club, by the fans uh, out there. Uh, he, and I think anyone that uh, was at the original predetermination here and, and heard Derek speak with the passion that he has for this football club, it's a big, big part of uh, Derek's life. Um, he uh, firmly believes he's unfinished business here. He's always uh, said to me that um, he didn't want to leave his club, just leaving one trophy in the boardroom and, and, and uh, it, it's great news for everyone that he is uh, committed. He, he just wants to get on uh, and doing a job. You no, know, he's spent a lot of time, effort and, and uh, money, I, I would add, uh, over the summertime to, 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 to rebuild the team. Since then he's uh, re-signed, got a number of players to to extend their, their contract, some of the senior players, some of the younger players. Uh, and everyone recognises the fantastic job that Tim and Tony have done and, and nobody wants to see him uh, leaving this club. We know he will one day, but uh, we all dearly hope that he's going to be here for quite some time. And it does also reinforce the need for the training facilities because Derek, from day one, has been a, a real bugbear. Yeah, w without doubt. And, and again, he, he, he never misses <laughs> an opportunity to uh, remind me in that. Uh, he, he, he's declared his uh, 
obligations uh, in, in his commitment to the club and he, he wants to make sure that my commitment, the board's commitment is is 100% behind him both in terms of doing everything we can to make sure uh, th these training facilities are delivered and delivered as soon as they possibly can be and, and we do genuinely believe it's realistic that we could have that facility on the ground by summer 19. We've then got to be able to follow through and raise the funds to deliver the stadium. But the priority for, for Derek, the players, and for everyone at the club is to get this, the training community facilities delivered. Just finally, the fans played a, a fantastic part in the Aurora campaign, which was all geared towards the 11th of October. Naturally, when that didn't happen, it has gone a wee bit flat now, but with the new time scale now confirmed, it's the opportunity, and we're urging the fans to get right behind it again. Yeah, no, they, they, they were absolutely fantastic. The bands, uh, the business community, the wider community, they all played a, a huge part in the build-up to the, 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 the October uh, council meeting. It was unfortunate that we had to, to pull it from the agenda at that late hour, but you know, as I said earlier, we believe it was the right thing to do. But we need to get that restarted again and, and there are plans in place to start to build that up during December and then uh, during January uh, to really get it going. And, and you know, people are asking us uh, what more uh, they, they can do. You know, we've had many people from the business community uh, coming forward and stating, no, we're 100% behind the club. This simply need, needs to happen. It's one of the things, it's, it's going to be another demonstration by the city that this is a council that is going to make things happen. We've come through a very, very difficult time the last two, three years, but I think it, we really have started to get our act together. And, and this is another major project that can be used to demonstrate and keep that whole momentum going. So on and off the, the park over the next few months, very busy but uh, exciting times ahead. Yeah, with, with, without any doubt, no, we said on a number of occasions that I think this next three to five years is, is going to be the most challenging that this club has ever faced. I think it were well placed to, to deal with that challenge. We are in the process of making some changes around the club, but that's going to be required if we're going to meet the challenge. And two fundamental fronts, you know, we've got to be able to build a bigger and stronger club over the next three to five years, and we've got to deliver this fantastic facility. And if we can achieve these two things over the next three to five years, then I think we'll have put this club in a really good place and good standing and set up for the next 20, 30, 40 years. Thanks very much, sir. Thank you.